Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. God is good. We're, we're almost at the end. I, I, must, I must admit, I have, a, um, I have a secret desire. Brother Soren knows what it is. Most of, you, most of you might, you might not, but if you, if you, um, if you know, if, you, if, you, if you've been listening to what I've been saying, and you've taken the time to come out on a Tuesday, and it's good to see some of you who has. Ah, new problem. Yeah. You got to keep solving some issues and doing it as cheaply and as... We're going to move to our new church. We'll get all our fancy stuff. We're just going to do things on the, on the fix, on the fly, as quick as we can. We'll have to work out something for you guys. I'll work out something. I know what to bring. I know what to bring. Um, but one of my secret desires was I, I thought it would be phenomenal and amazing if during the time of our Bible study, if I could see the beast grow. When I say the beast grow, what do I mean? What do I mean by the beast grow? How does the beast grow? I mean, the beast did grow. How did, how did the beast grow? Oh, no one knows. No, 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 no. That's, that's, how, does the, how does the beast grow? Um, nope. Nobody know, no one knows how the beast grows. Let's start off with chapter one again. My, my. Tammy, you don't know how the beast grows. Surely, only Soren would know how the beast grows. Brother Soren, according to my crazy ideas, <laughs> how does the beast grow? Do you know how the beast grows? How, how do I say the beast grows? We always have these talks all the time. Anybody knows how the beast grows? No one knows how the beast grows. Okay. There are about uh, very, a, a, a very few handful of nations who are anti-West. They're anti-West. North Korea is anti-West. Um, um, yeah. Yep. 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 Not. Yeah, not that I care whether Russia wins or Ukraine wins. I, I'm not interested in who wins. All I wanted to see, and it, uh, probably it's not going to happen, of course, because it's taking so long <laughs> for their, uh, to finish it. It might not happen even in my lifetime. But every time you hear that someone else joins NATO or someone else um, becomes a follower of the, the system that you find in the West and the, and the ideologies that you find, in, in the West, I, I know Barack Obama um, had attempted to bring some of his ideas to some of the, some of the African countries. And, and, and typically, when, a, when, a, when an African country, um, when an African country accepts what I would call the Obama doctrine of, um, of relationships, let's just say that, if, when they accept the Obama doc doctrine on relationships, not economics or, you know, um, Global politics or anything, but just, just, on, just on relationships, um, because he really pushed that through the nations. He really did try to get that to, to go everywhere. Um, when they rejected, and, and primarily the ones that, 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 that rejected him outrightly, some South American countries, but, um, but African countries rejected that. And um, when you see them, and I ultimately say that. Whether they reject it this year or next year or the year after, they will accept it. They will accept it as much as a hundred years ago in, in, um, in, 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 in Australia or a hundred years ago. Who, whoever thought a hundred years ago, find a person that's a octogenarian? Is that 50 or? What's a hundred years? What do you, what do you call them? 
a centenary. What, what, do you, what do you call it? A person that's. A century. Yep. A centenary, okay. And an octagon, is that 50? Octagon has five parts, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, something like that. But you even go back 50 years ago, ask the person 50 years ago, hey, would, would, would our nation, would the nation of Australia accept, um, you know, the, the yes vote as, without me going, it'd be a, would, would, they, would, they, would anybody even think that was possible? They wouldn't even think that was possible. They would, you'd never think you could ever put such a thing before a nation. Uh, and, and, and the nation would, would say yes, it would go ahead. The, the things that are happening right now, um, the nations of, of the world would never, ever think it was so. And Even um, being in um, like relationships outside of marriage, mm. 50 years ago, that, that was taboo. Now it's taboo. Woodstock began it. You know, they had the hippie movement, free love, you know. That kind of began it, but even before that, in, in, in the 40s, uh, 50s, it was well, unheard of, you know, but now it's, it's commonplace, Everyone, everyone's like that. So, as you see more and more countries adopting Western ideas, as you see nations fighting against nations, and Western countries with, with Western mindsets supporting them, Funneling money into them, money that could, money that could go and, and they, enough money has gone into, into the Ukraine war from the United States to have solved the homeless crisis, yes or no? Yeah. They're, they're going to solve it. So it, it, it was possible for them to do it, but no interest in doing that. But they, but they are interested, just think about it. What would be the political motivation of, of, a, of a government not taking the, the, those in their society, the, the, the worst off, and lifting them up. You, you would think that would be on their agenda, but it's not. But on their agenda, full, I mean, and, and, and get the vote through, would be send billions and billions and billions of dollars in aid so that Ukraine does not lose the war. Why not? Because they're representing something that is, is ideal and, and near and dear to them, which is democracy. And, um, and, the, and the West sees uh, Ukraine as, you know, fighting for democracy as, as, how, as how they would have it. And, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian. Put me in, in, a, in a communist country, I'm a Christian. Put me in North Korea, I'm a Christian. Uh, put me in, 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 a, in a Buddhist country, I'm a Christian. All those politics has nothing to do. Christianity is separate from all those things. But I can sit away and separate from all those things and I can look at it and I can see the trend, I can see what is happening and I, I can see how um, the nations are developing and how they're... So it'd be interesting to see how it happens. I would have these great debates with Brother Soren about how it's going to end and it may end that Russia finally wears them out and, and, they, and they win. But it doesn't matter because I'm looking towards all the nations of the earth being as one army to fight against God. They must become as one army. There must be a unity in their mindset. And I'm looking for that. And um, it, it's got to come to a point where whatever the central head said, everybody else accepts it. Whatever, uh, you know, the democratic system and whoever is the leadership of it says, everybody just embraces it. I was looking for that to happen, but obviously it's not going to happen during the course of our, our Bible study. I'm, I'm on the last three verses about. And I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to go slow, it's just that there's some very interesting things that the scriptures are saying. And they are relevant to you and I, and we have to take the time to give God the, the glory and, and to give Him the, the respect and the reverence. And to look at ourselves and to find ourselves in the scripture, because they do speak about you, and I want to identify. Um, chapter 12 and verses 10 it says you have to identify with one of these. Identify with one of these. I like how sometimes when, before they begin a battle, they would say, Who, whosoever is on the Lord's side, let him come forth. You're all, you're all, you look like everybody, whoever, there's a big group of people, he says, hey, whoever is on God's side, step forward. Let's deal with it from there. And whoever's not on God's side, then we're going to have to fight. And those who step forward would fight with them who are going to go forward. I like that. And so what we're doing tonight is uh, I'm declaring to you 
And I'm asking you to, 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 to say within yourself, am I on the Lord's side or am I not on the Lord's side? Because you have to pick a side. You know, there's no neutral zone in this war. You have to pick a side. You can't be for one or the other. You have to pick a side. I pick a side. I pick a side. I pick Ukraine. Do I like Ukraine? I do. I pick Ukraine. Why do I pick Ukraine? Do I like Ukraine? No. Do I believe in that? They, they might be the most wicked nation in the world. I, that's not, I pick Ukraine because? I want, thank you. Can I applaud you? Because God's word is going to come to pass. And I'm looking for that. And I know this is how it's going to happen. It may be by treaty. It may be by consent. It may be by fist and sword and war and blood and death. But it shall come to pass. God's word must come to pass. And you don't often see it happening in our world. But, um, but, but, it, does, but it does happen. You remember um, in um, uh, the, the, the Berlin War, uh, the Berlin Wall that separated East and West? Nobody thought that would ever break, but it, it broke, came down. And you know, North and South Korea, they're divided, right? Imagine our world right now, if something happens and North and South Korea became one again. I watched the war and, 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 and how it happened in, in North and South Korea, and they fought and they pushed back. Um, the, the North had pushed all the way back against the South, and when there was like this little patch at the bottom of, 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 the, of the island or the, the, the peninsula or whatever, the Americans jumped in and they poured a heap of military and they pushed back and they pushed back and they pushed back against the North and then they stopped in the middle like how they're stopped in the middle right now. You should watch the development and, it, and just watch the, and then watch the death toll. It happened within North and South Korea. It happened the same way. Exactly what you see happening right now happened with North and South Korea. And, just, and it was like, you know, 10,000, 20,000. And then once they got to the middle and they began to fight to the death and they, neither side would stop. North and South fought each other. Then the death toll just went like, you know, 100, 200, 300 million. It just, just kept on going. It exponentially just going up so much quicker. And, and, just, they were just, and no one gained the ground, but men were dying like because it was democracy versus communism. And so today, North Korea is, uh, is communist and, um, and South Korea is democratic. But lots of blood was spilled to get to that point. But you know what? I'm telling you something. You can hear an old man today that that war is not finished yet. The, the war between the, the North and the South of Korea is not over yet. They will, they will fight again. The war between Taiwan and, and, and China is not over. They will, they will, they will, you understand that there are some, there are some poles that are going to come together at some point. They will, because it's just natural there to do that. Whether it be by acknowledgement of recognition of or whatever, or it be by blood, but it'll happen. You have to find yourself. You've got to find yourself. You've got to pick a side. Pick a side. And I have a reason for why you're picking. Why am I picking that side? And, 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 and I want the, the side I pick to, to align with Scripture. I want my side to align with the Word of God. I want it to align with it. Whether for good or for bad, I want it to align. Everyone fights against the movement. Uh, you know, um, teaching children about this and that. They fight against it. I don't fight. Why don't I fight? <laughs> because I, it's a war you cannot win. Why not? Because God says it's going to happen. Am I right or wrong? Have you screamed? Join a protest march. Do all the different things. It doesn't matter. God says it's going to come to pass and the governments of the world must pass it. I'll pick the side. You may, you may, oh, you're picking the bad side. No, of course I'm picking the bad side. I know what God said and I'm saying that side's going to win. I don't care who wins. I'm just saying I know that side's going to win because God said evil must increase until I come then the cup of my wrath is full. When the cup of my wrath is full, I will pour out my indignation. So I'm looking for it. So the more iniquity that abounds, what do I care? As long as iniquity does not abound in me, I don't care. As long as iniquity does not abound in my children, I don't care. As long as iniquity does not abound in the people that I'm in contact with. Sister, my sister, if iniquity was abounding inside of you and I'm uncomfortable with that, woe well, to me. Because I know that you're on the Lord's side, so there's a separation and division. And if you see iniquity abounding in me, woe to me, if you accept it. So we don't accept it, but we're saying it's going to happen. In Daniel 12, he says, verses 10, he says, Many shall be purified. Many shall be purified. I like that. 
They're not pure, but they shall be purified. They're not pure, but they shall be purified. To be purified means you're not pure. It's not, a, it's not a fantastic revelation, but it's one that you need to understand. Because when you look at yourself, sometimes, I remember Sister Julie used to sing a song, uh, and I connect that song with her because my brain thinks musically. Um, purify my heart. I love that song because it, it, it's saying, hey, there are things in me that you need to purify, Lord. It's a very honest acknowledgement of yourself and recognition of the fact that you need God to purify things about yourself. And it's, it's okay to do that. It's okay for you to say, God, purify me because the scriptures have declared that many shall be purified. And I want to tell you something, that those who are going to be purified, they're going to be purified for a reason. And the reason why is because they're asking God to purify them. I'm telling you now this, this morning, this night, that God does not help anybody that does not ask for his help. If you find anything inside of you that there should not be, the Bible says many shall be purified. I want that word to be fulfilled upon myself. Lord, purify me. There, there, I am not purified here. I'm not purified there. I'm not purified in, in, in whatever way it may be. It's okay. God will purify you. Why? Because the Bible says they will be purified. And, uh, and if you seek, you shall find. If you ask, it shall be given. Lord, save me. I mean, what are the odds of... How can you get salvation if you're down on the cross, you simply look over at a man down beside you, and you say, Lord, remember me when you're coming to your kingdom, and then this awesome thing happens, today you should be me in paradise. He makes it so simple. He makes it so easy. Almost too easy. But suppose that's how easy God intended salvation to be. Suppose that's how easy God intended the changes that come into your life and the growth and the development that you need in order for you to be saved. Suppose it was actually meant to be that easy. Suppose all it took was for God to say, I have heard the cry that you're crying and I am going to, I'm going to, 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 to obey or not to obey, but to fulfill what you have desired of me. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Got it. Suppose salvation was that easy. Suppose salvation did not have to do with you being so wonderful and so perfect, but simply you asking God on a daily basis to help me to be saved. To say, God, I am a sinner and you're the Savior. Suppose salvation was like that. What a wonderful thing it would be if salvation was like that. For you to acknowledge yourself that, I, I, I like how one time after, after one of the apostles that, uh, you know, he had, he had denied Jesus and, he, and then Christ came and said, oh Lord, go away from me, I'm a man of unclean lips, uh, uh, I'm not worthy to be in your presence. You know, and, and God purified him and God made him and God drew him near. I wonder if it's any different for us. I know we oftentimes see, think it's impossible for God to love us the way he loved them or for God to do for us like he did. But I think those examples, I think I know those examples are given for us to understand that God's in the saving business and he wants to save you. And I've got to preach a message of hope lest anybody here become so despondent and they become so, you know, overwhelmed with their own self that they give up. I, I, don't, ever want to, I don't ever want to see a child of God give up. I don't ever want to see a child of a God quit and walk away because their circumstance and their situation is so overwhelming or the devil has them in such a position that they think, I can never win, I can never overcome. Because I remember, Brother George, as I was growing up as a Christian, there were so many times when I found myself and I say, like, will I ever get to where I need to get to? How will I ever get past this place? And I go, will I, and, oh, now I got to get past this place. I go, you know, and, and until I began to realize, hey, wait a minute, it's not myself, it's God that's actually at work. It's God that's at work. Everybody say, God's at work. It's not your own self. You can do nothing of yourself. Even to your own desire. Peter said, Lord, I'll never. Hey, Lord, I shall. Oh, and God said, oh, yes, I know you will. <laughs> until, the, until the, oh, yeah, you're going to stand beside me until the clock throws three times. <laughs> you're going to find yourself running away. You know? Yes, you're going you're gonna, to. You, you, you're, no matter how strong your mind is, listen to me. I'm saying to you today, if you want to serve God a particular way, and you want to serve God as how you should, if you're going to be purified, it, it is not a matter of your conscious will because your conscious will is not able to save you. So if, 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 if my conscious will is not able to save me, what saves me? Say it again. It's, it's not my conscious will, and so it's not, of, it's, it's not of him that willeth, because I really want to. I really, I heard a pastor preach a message, and he says, you've got to have the want to. I want to. 
Yeah, <laughs> and no matter how much wanter you want, Peter had the wanter, but he still failed him. Many men had the wanter, but they still fail him. But I have found, I have found that if you have set your heart and your desire to be heaven and home, and your mind is on heaven, and, and, and your eyes aren't on earthly things, God gets the message and what you are saying and how you live. How did you live your life today? How did I live my life today? Was my life, did I, did I live my life as a, as a sacrifice to God and God said, you know what, that guy wants to be saved. Or, or did I go and do whatever I want to do, say whatever I want to say, and it's like just hope for the best. No, no. I live my life the way that God wanted to live my life and serve him the way I know he's supposed to, I'm supposed to serve him. And in that process, there is a pro, the purifying of the individual. Many shall be purified. And, say it again. Draw an eye unto me, and I will draw an eye unto you. And in your action, and in your behavior, God sees the sincerity of your heart and what you really want. You know? Sometimes when your heart's telling you, hey, where's Michelle? Where's Michelle? Where's Michelle? Didn't she come for weeks? <laughs> where is she now? Michelle, where are you? I wonder if she prayed that prayer. I wonder if she prayed and said, Lord, you know, I have this, I have that, uh, I have this mindset, that mindset, because I'm, I'm looking for her. We had great conversations. And guess what? I said from here, and I, did, I, I mean, God wants to save her. Of course he does. Look. Of course he does. I don't have to be a prophet to say that. Just look. He wants to save her. The sincere desire is uh, to, to come to the house of God. But yet at the same time, there's something. What is it? Says, no, you know, don't you, Nuku? Don't say it. What's drawing her away? I want to serve you, God, but something is drawing me. What's drawing you away? And I ask that question today. I, God knows you want to serve him, but what's drawing you away? The thing that draws you away, and the Bible says that we're drawn away in various circumstances. But the thing that draws you away is the thing you've got to say, God, help me to be saved. Lord, you know what? I can, you may have a list of 10 things. Oh, just listen to me today. I wrote a few things down, but I don't really care. You may have a list of 10 things that you know is drawing you away from God. Write them down in your heart. And when you, when you, when you have them in your soul and in your mind, you say, God, you know, I'm, I'm like this, Lord. I'm like this. I... I get too much like this, and, and oh God, I'm too much like that. And, and I, Lord, I like this about myself. And, oh God, can you please change me? Oh God, can you make me what I need to be? Oh God, can you give me strength in this area or in this area of my life? It's, it's, a, it's, it's a wonderful prayer to pray to the Lord. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a prayer where you desire to be, pur to be purified by Him. And he does purify you if you pray and you ask him to do that. But I think oftentimes we worry. We worry about our stand with God. We worry about where we are. We worry about, you know, we, and we spend so much time worrying. Not enough time simply asking by faith and just going on. You ask by faith. Everybody say, ask by faith. And then what? And go on. Looking unto Jesus, who's the author and finisher of your faith. Looking unto him. Lord, this is the problem. Can I solve it today? Can I solve it in a moment? No. But can you solve it for me? Yes, because I see my eye is on the sparrow and I know what I need to do. I know what I need to do to change you, to make you what you need to be. I see you. Oftentimes, you know, there are things about ourselves we don't understand. We don't accept because, you know, we oftentimes think we're perfect in, in so many ways and God has to come to us and God has to say, and I'm talking about purifying. God has to come to us, he has, he, has to, he has to say, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm going to allow this thing to come upon you or that. I'm going to allow you to fall. And God's favorite way of showing you that you need to, you need to talk to him is, is, is by making you fall. Hey God, can you make them fall? So they pray? Hey Peter, you, you're in your strength, aren't you? You're in your, you're in your might, aren't you? Yes, until you fell. Then what did he do? He went out and he wept bitterly. You know what he said? He wept bitterly. And sometimes you never know what's inside of you because oftentimes you can just, you can just hide it away so well. You're so good at it. <laughs> You're so good at it. And the heart is deceitfully wicked. And it's motivations. You don't know it's motivations. The heart will lead you in a way that you should not go, but you say, ah, it's all right, but you should not go that way. But God says, I'm going to change it. 
And so what you have to have to do is say to God, I want you to, to ch I like, um, I like the song we sang, Oh, wash me now without within, or send the, send the searchlight from heaven into my soul, and if I find anything that should not be, take it, Lord, and set me free, oh, say, um, sir, search me, search me, Lord. You ever heard that song? Search me, search me, Lord, oh, send the lighthouse from heaven into my soul. And if you find anything that should not be, take it, Lord, and set me free, but search me, search me, Lord. Search me. I, yeah, she, she stole that song. She didn't, yeah, but she, she sings that one, yeah. <laughs> Created me a heart that's clean, purified. Many shall be. Many sh I want to be one of those. I want to pray. Lord, I want to be one of those who are purified. Purified means, hey, I, there are things about me, Lord, you still got to change. I'm holding my hands up. I got my head bowed. Lord, all the things about me that still needs to change, I'm okay with it. I'm in a safe place, Lord. Hey, church, look at me in my safe zone here. At the pulpit in front of all of you before God. I, am I in a safe zone or not? Am I in a safe zone? Lord, change the things about me. I need, you still need to change. Change them in me, Lord. I'm okay with that. So is God. That's what you pray. And then you stay. And you worship. And you love God. And watch the changes come. And watch the, the, the molding and the, and, the, and the fashioning. Just have to take a little time and say, God, uh, you know there are things about me that you need to change. But the wicked... Yep. 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 Oh yeah, Sister Charmaine. But Sister Charmaine, you're one of my top saints, and you can you're one of my top guys. And you can, eh? <laughs> hey, you're one of my. But and you and you mean you still can you still can be like oh that thing about me is still there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and God's like that's okay. Many shall be purified. And you see how she can come and say, you know what, man, man, this mouth of mine, this heart of mine can just, uh, it just goes off the top a few times, you know? It, can't it? <sighs> hey, man, can we give her a head clap? It's a, woo! Oh, you're in a safe place. You're, you're in a safe place. It's okay. When you're before God's presence and you're telling God, oh, man, I don't like that about myself. I really need that to change. <laughs> You know, no, no just, just smile. Oh, Lord, that is, I don't like that about me. You know, hey, brother Alex, where's brother Alex? He's running around the place. Oh, you're there. Do you think we were wrong when we put that guy in his place, the road rage guy? Remember the, remember the road rage guy? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, were, we, were we wrong or not? We're just, were we just being bullies, you think? I just feel good now. <laughs> But he shut up, though, didn't he? Yeah. He behaved himself. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we got a bit boisterous. <laughs> Somebody was trying to but, but chump us. Huh? You need to also um, respect your heart. Yeah. Yeah, well, I didn't like it. I didn't like him having a big mouth. He's. he's yeah, I, know, but, like, you still love him, right? you still I don't know him. I didn't know he had a big mouth. <laughs> but Alex? He's trying to make us like he's going to intimidate us. I ain't intimidated, man. intimidated by you. You got a big mouth, dude. Yeah, well, yeah, course, I have no idea. He's just like doing all them kind of things. Brother Regan, I didn't know him. Didn't like him or anything, but I know, man. Hey, hey, Rob, chill out, dude. <laughs> like, oh, no, that's still there. No, it's because I don't like anybody messing with me. I don't like it. <laughs> And Brother Regan, if he's going to mess with me like that and then walk away, I'm like, uh, you know, I try to be quiet, but, you know, anyway. Am I in my safe zone or not? Lord, next time, just let me be quiet. 
See what I mean? We're on the same page, all right? <laughs> Woo! That's why your marriage it can, can be getting so much trouble sometimes because you just don't know what to say, just okay, stop now, stop now. This time just let God fight your battle and don't say anything more. I know what you're able to do. Any crazy person can do anything they want to do, but you're a child of God, just behave now. Uh, so, um, Brother Alex, I was a bad example, I'm sorry. All right, next time we're out with each other, let's not be bullies, all right? Anyone mess it? And, and drive, drive better, because you're making people upset with your driving. You know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I, I did well that day. Yeah, I did well that day. Anyway. Many shall be purified. I want to be one of them. I am one of them. Many shall be purified. I am one of them. Everyone say, I am one of them. Hey, the Bible says, the righteous man stumbles what? Seven times. Seven times. This is Charmaine. Imagine God is purifying you. Oh, pl please forgive me. Imagine God is purifying you so much. You didn't say the beep word or the bat word or the boom word or the let word. You didn't say none of those things. All you did was put somebody in their place. Can you imagine God is purifying you so much that just to put somebody in their place, if you could do it more Christ-like, imagine being purified to that extent. That you handled it one way, but you're going to handle it another way. And so she handled it her way, but she said, you know what, I can handle it. That's why I said to somebody, if you got to tell somebody something, tell them it with a smile, but mean every word you say. But smile at them, but mean it 100%. Smile at them, look them right in the eye and smile. I'm, not, uh, I'm dead serious. There's no emotion, there's no, but if the attitude's there, then it makes it, that's what makes it funny. And that's like, I've learned to smile. Many shall be purified. Purified to the point where how you say something is checked. Why you say something is checked. When you say something is checked. Every situation is you. You know when you're being purified. It's questioning every single motive. Every single motive. It's it's questioning. And why did you do this? What was your motive? Why you did this? Why why did you say that? What was your motive? Was it for this reason or that reason? Was it for, for good or for evil? Was it for up or for down? Was it for good or for bad? Well, because you've been purified. And so because you've been purified, all your thoughts are before the Lord. And everything, he's mulling through them. He said, for what? For the spirit of, of man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of your belly. The deep things about yourself that you don't even understand. He goes back and checks all your motives. Changes the code on... Says, okay, let's, let's do that this way, that one. They should be purified and made white. And if, and, and if you allow him to do that, as Sister Charmaine has done, now, you know, and we're talking about Daniel and prophecy, but yet look at how relevant this is to us today. If you allow him to do it, Sister Charmaine, you just, Sister Charmaine, you, you can't miss heaven. Do you understand that? You, you can't miss it. If you're going to let him do that and go inside of you and rewrite that program that's so hardwired in your head, who knows where it's or how it's, it's just there. If you can let him do that, you can't miss heaven because that's what salvation is. That's the fulfillment of many shall be purified and made white. That's what it looks like. And it's okay to come before people in the church and say, hey, yeah, I didn't handle this properly. Or the pastor say, hey, Brother Alex, yeah, we probably shouldn't be bullying people. <laughs> I am the pastor. That's what it looks like. Next time you do it better. And you're not saying, oh, I'm not going to be saved because of the way I handled that situation two weeks ago. That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't hey, the Bible says his mercy is going to make new every morning. Every, every morning God gets up and like, hey, whoo, let's go. Hey, eh? Yeah, God's like, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whew. Another day, another trial. Let's go. Hey, eh? and you got to go through that one too. Get to the end of the day and you write to the code. Okay, you didn't have this one there. Am I right or wrong? Because you got to pray. 
And when you pray, or even if you don't pray, you try to fall asleep, it's going to bother you. Didn't like that, that, and that. Yeah, but that was okay, but that wasn't okay. Yeah. Why is that? You're being purified. But the wicked, oh, let's talk about those guys. But the wicked, they shall do wickedly. <laughs> if I was not in church tonight, I better have a very good reason. I have had a very busy day, this, 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 this. I have all the different things, and I could just not be in church tonight. But if I was not in church tonight, guess what? Hmm. I have to give an, an account to God. Hey, Robbie, why are you coming to church tonight? Oh, uh, well, I, I mean, if I wasn't the pastor, I just didn't feel like coming. I'd have a difficult time justifying myself before God because God wants to know, why were you in my house? Why? For what reason? Is it not important to you? Are you busy? Have you got more important things to do? I don't want him bugging my, I don't want God bugging my conscience about church. I don't want God bugging my conscience about how I love people. I, I, you know, I, there are very few things God have to bug my conscience about, very few things. But I don't want him bugging things, I, I, I should just be able to, you know, I, those, those are simple things. I've been a Christian for such a long time now. You know. But the wicked, oh, they shall do wickedly. And nothing that the wicked does is, 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 is an offense to them. In fact, the more wicked they are, the more happier they are. And they don't check, they don't see, they don't, they don't query, they don't ask God. They don't, they, don't, they don't care, they just do whatever they want to do. And the wicked shall do wickedly. And they just keep doing more and more wicked. They break all his laws and break... And by the way, I am not comparing myself to them because we are so far from the wicked that the very thoughts that we are thinking... I know, I know. But we're going to hang out. We're going to hang out too. Sorry, guys, forget this distraction once in a while. Go to Sister Adama. She wants to say hi to you. Who wants you to go on over there? Oh, bye. Over again. Come forward. Run, run. <laughs> Tammy has this horrible scene of the speaker falling on top of him. It's safe. The speaker is safe. Okay, God, this just, it looks like that. Tammy, it's okay. Don't get nervous. He's going to yeah, rescue him. Yeah. Hey, everybody, everybody know he's, he's all your baby, right? He's, he's everyone's baby, right? You know that, right? Everybody know that? Yeah. We gave him, we gave him to the church, right? Okay. Quit hogging him, Bethany. Except hide him from Benny, hide him from Benny. Benny, <laughs> except, except Benny. <laughs> After watch Benny, Benny's like, you're my baby. Don't steal my baby. That's all right, that's all right. Love him. So, the wicked tonight shall do the most abominable things and sleep as sweetly as they were babies in mama's arms. <laughs> because, and there's a reason why, I want to get to that. They will do whatever wickedness they want, nothing will bother them whatsoever. They have no concept of God, no conscience of Him. They're no, they're, they're just, they're just, they just live their life and just here to enjoy it and nothing else matters. They wreck their lives and wreck their marriages and wreck everything. I, I'm on the way over here. I got a, a text message from a, from a person who just wrecked his life. I said to Tammy, write him back and say unto him, until a man changes his choices, he will never change his life. Until a man, if a man wants to change his life, he must change his choices. Choices brought you there and choices can bring you out. You cannot, and, and you shall be as miserable as you ever were until the grave unless you change your choices. Because no good comes of evil. And they shall do wickedly. And then he goes on, hey Lord, why does the right, why does the purified get pure, but the wicked just keep doing wickedly? Why is that? The, the angel of God will explain to you. Here is the difference between the purified and, and, and those who are not. Simple, simple understanding. It says this, and none of the wicked shall, shall, shall try really hard. <laughs> no, none of, none of the wicked shall repent and, and no, no, no. He says, hey, listen, the most important part of purifying is understanding. Proverbs, let's go to Proverbs 4, Proverbs 4 verses 7.
Proverbs 4, verses 7. Wisdom is the most important thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Sister Belinda, Sister Belinda, therefore get wisdom. Uh, Sister Belinda, and with all thy getting, get understanding. What does that say to you? you know what it says to me? You can get all the stuff you want. Sister Baza, get all the stuff you want. Tashi, it says you can get all the stuff you want. It says with all thy getting. You can get what he said, don't get. He says with all thy getting. But as, get all that you want. And by the way, guys, I have, I, excuse me, I have a lot of stuff. It's mostly junk, but it's mine. <laughs> eh? And, 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 and it's my junk, and I, to me, it's my treasure, okay? One man's trash is another man's treasure. It's my, I have a lot of stuff, Brother Regan, because I know there are people with nothing. They wish they had my quarter acre block in Lockridge, but my other acre in this, I don't care. My quarter acre in Lockridge is mine. I'm, I'm just grateful I got that. Life can be tough. <laughs> and you should go to some places where there you never go to Sydney and go buy a house. How much house costs over there? A million bucks? I see some little, two brothers are fighting over some house. It's worth 2.2 .2 million. Some little rundown shack. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> Have you seen that? These two Italian guys are fighting each other. They're going to kill each other. But mommy bought them out. The house is worth 2 point something million dollars. Brother George, you wouldn't even rent it. But in Sydney, that's 2.2. .2. <laughs> Thank God for my quarter acre in Lockridge. I, I have a lot of stuff. And you know what? I'm gonna, I am, hey, I am, I'm telling you now, I'm going to get more stuff. <laughs> Brother Regan? In, next to the roulette, I got my lake and my caravan. I got my land, my lake, my caravan. Brother George? Hey, I got stuff. My boat out there, can't drive, have no motor. I have another boat at the church house. I got two boats. I got one boat at church house and the other. Neither of them run. Neither of them run. But they're my boats. Woo! Hey, <coughs> this, hey, Tammy, you got stuff. Today she'll take her horse to the hospital. And I went and picked up her horse float. Hey? And float him. Yes, call it. You know, some you gotta get their, be their bellies dredged and stuff like that. Well, George, I got my full drive. Maybe ugly, but it's still mine. Tammy, I didn't have to go borrow Regan's four-wheel drive, did I? I had my own four-wheel drive. And my tow bar, I hooked it up to my caravan, and I got my horse. I have a lot of stuff, Brother Regan. And I'm going to get more stuff, Brother George. Because the Bible says, with all thy getting, get understanding. As long as I have understanding, you can have whatever you want. Wasn't Abraham wealthy? Why was he wealthy? Because he knew God. God said, you have all the wealth you want. But if you have wealth and the wealth stops you from understanding, I have a lot of understanding and I need more. I'm going to get more understanding. That's okay. Hey, somebody said, oh, the, the more understanding you get, the richer you, the poorer you get. Who said that? The more understanding you have, the poorer you get. That's not true. What does your Bible say about understanding and wisdom? What does it say? Can anybody tell me? Just read the next verse. Can you read it out loud for me? I haven't looked at it properly. What does it say? What does it say? I don't know. Maybe I missed it. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. You know what it says? She shall bring thee to honor. <laughs> <laughs> when thou dost embrace her, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She shall deliver thee. And one point said, she'll make you rich. <laughs> wisdom makes you rich. It's okay. Because it's not the wisdom of the world, but the wisdom that God gives. That shows you how to be blessed. 
and shows you how to make your hands profit and shows you how to be prosperous in life. Yeah, it does. It's, it's called knowing God. Um, but the wicked don't have understanding. They, they think that the only reason why they're here is just to get, 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 get a bigger house, bigger car, bigger this, bigger job, bigger promotion, bigger everything. Any understanding of God? No. In your Bible? No. Do you worship God? No. Do you serve God? No. But you're getting all this stuff. And by the way, you cannot get unless God gives. Hey, rich man, rich man, you know what you have? Because God gave. Everybody say, God gives? We get. Everything you have, God gave it to you. Even, even the man who doesn't know that God gave it to him, God gave it to him. God calls it to, to, drain, up, to drain upon the, the, the just and the unjust. He, gives, he blesses everybody. Hey, Brother Alex, how old are you? And you paid your house off already. What? What? 34 years old, already got his house paid off. And I'm not going to tell them the number because then I know how much tithe you need to give me every Sunday. <laughs> you got to show off to me like, hey, Rob, look what I made last year. Boom. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Man, hey, house paid off and he's making big, big money. Brother, hey, your house is paid off and you're making big money? What? Are you making so much big money? Oh, let me, can I just show off? Can I just show off a little bit? Last time we went to buy his Prado. Went to buy his Prado. Brother had a bag of money. Didn't you? Yes, you did. He had a bag of money. He had a bag of money. Apostolic, you know. <laughs> Love God, you know. Sister, Sister Charmaine, he had a bag of money. That, ba that, that, that bag looked suspicious. They said to him, how much, how much a full drive going to cost? He's like, yeah, it's about, I don't know, about 80 grand. 80 grand, wow. So, sorry, bro. You're apostolic, you're rich. Got it in cash inside of here, man. He's, you know, he's... He said, hey, Rob, yeah, hold the bag for me, man. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I lose things all the time. <laughs> It's like, that's a lot of money to walk around in cash. Brother Alex, you're blessed. Hey, you're blessed. You serve God in what you, you, of course you're blessed. Watch everything come together. Watch everything. It shouldn't fall apart. We're Christians. If it does, say thank you, Jesus. You must have a reason. God gives, we get. And we come back to the house of God after we have gotten, and we say thank you, Jesus, for what we have gotten. Because God gave, I got. But there's one thing I cannot do. Because God gives both materially, but he also gives spiritually as well. And you see, the problem is, the world is willing to take what he gives materially, but rejects understanding. Because the same God, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God, and he will give it to him. But when God's trying to give you wisdom, and, and, and one day the man sits down and says with all, one day... Uh, Sister Tash, we used to call her uh, uh, Sister Trump. Because she had herself a million dollar worth of properties, man. Brother George, many, many years ago, a million dollar worth of, she had three houses, man. She was like, oh, man, you know. Funniest thing, though, was one day, I might have told you guys the story already. Tash is like, I paid this much money on the house and stuff this year, but the exact amount of money that I paid for the house is the exact amount of money that I made. Remember that, Tash? And then she's like, how did I eat? I'm like, oh. <laughs> we just sit out my house every day. I fed her every day. <laughs> we, had, we, had, we had fun with that. You know? But, but after a while, Natasha figured out, she's like, hey, wait a minute. How's this cat hug you? How's this cat make you feel satisfied or fulfilled or anything like that? They're, they're empty things. And they shouldn't care about as much anymore. You know, that's nice to have your wisdom about this. And, but, you know, it's like, let me focus on God. And I think, Tash, I think you're happier than ever, you've ever been. But you, have, but, you, but you have less than a million bucks in property. You know? Who cares? 
It's not about that. You see, because she has allowed God to give her understanding. What makes life rewarding and fulfilling? Falling after your flesh, doing whatever the world does, seeking after materialism, ignoring God, not worshiping? No, of course not. Serving God. Being faithful unto his house, being faithful unto his name, that's what is, is, uh, is wonderful. Let's, uh, we're almost done. Let's give me five minutes, I'll be done. Let's go back to Daniel again. It's called inheritance. God said you should be blessed in this earth. I should be blessed. Sorry. <laughs> I should be blessed. Look at somebody say, I should be blessed. Look at her. Tell her. She's not looking at you. Tell her, I should be blessed. You should be blessed. Amen. Yes? yes? You should be blessed. You should be blessed. It's okay. You should be blessed. Oh, by the way, guys, if you're not blessed now, hold on. It's coming. Because your blessing is not the abundance of things you have, but God is allowing you to enjoy every step of the way. Your blessing is, is in Jesus Christ alone. I'm done. I'm almost done here. He says this. He says this. Listen to this. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. Why do wicked men do wickedly? Because they don't understand what? That there's a, there's a day of judgment for their actions, for their works. That there's a God who watches from above and judges everything. They must all stand before the judgment of Christ. They don't understand that. They don't understand that it's so much better to do good than bad. Hey, but guys, you feel better doing good than you do doing evil. They don't know that. Sister Tammy, it's better for me to be married to you from the time I was married to you until the time I die. And you're the only one that I've ever loved and ever shall love. It's better for me to do that than to at some point in my life decide, you know what, I, I, I still look good. No, you don't. You're an old man now. <laughs> Brother George, you know? <laughs> Brother George, you work out in the gym. You got the muscles. Still looking good, bro. Hey? And show off those. Yeah, you're tired now. <laughs> hey, but can, you, but Brother George, can you imagine going and throwing away all that you've. Because now, you know, you're working out, you get some muscles, you're. Can you imagine, can you imagine getting to an age where you should be settling into your blessing? And you said you're throwing it away? I know a man, listen to me, I know a man. You sing in the choir in my church back home. And that man left his wife. And that man, I don't know, I don't know how that's even possible in the Apostolic Church, but, you know. And um, went and did these, this and that, went home and spent his money and, you know. Brother, Brother, Brother Regan? He went home and did this and did this. All they did was rip him off. They rip, God made sure they ripped every cent from him until he had nothing left. They ripped him off until he had nothing left. But he was destitute, just poor. Instead of, instead of his life being lengthened, it was shortened. As though, if you don't obey, you can somehow preserve yourself or preserve your life. It cannot happen. But the wise, but the wise shall understand. And because we understand, we can live in this world. We can enjoy the blessings that God has given unto us. We can, Tammy, you can enjoy your horse. Brother Asnes, you can enjoy your four-wheel drive. Whatever it is that you enjoy doing, you can enjoy it. He has, he's blessed us with all those things. But we understand that there is something way more better than just the materialism that we have. Work. Be faithful in business, all the things you do, and be blessed in those things. But don't take your eye off of Jesus because you're pursuing this. Or pursuing Keep your eye on the Lord. Keep loving God. Keep seeking heaven. Keep looking internally. And with all my blessings, I might... Wait, hey, wait a minute. Robert, with all, are, you, are you becoming more carnal with all your blessings? Are they making you carnal? Are they making you less spiritual? Are they making you not love God like you should? Because if they are, there's something wrong with those blessings. If my blessings are calling me to take a little step away from God, something wrong with those. But if my blessing is making me say, Lord, you know what, I can enjoy those things, and then just kick them off to the side that it didn't matter, and just go and just humbly worship before the Lord, that's true blessing. Amen. Let's just rise to our feet. Purify my heart, cleanse me from within, yeah, 
and make me holy. Purify my heart. Cleanse me deep within. Somebody say, refiner's fire. Somebody say, my heart's one desire. I want to be, he is to be. I want to be holy, yeah, Lord. Set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be yeah, holy every day, Lord. Set apart for you, my master. Yes, I'm ready to do your will. One last time, say, purify. Purify my heart. Cleanse me from wasted and make me holy. Purify my heart. Oh, cleanse me from within, yeah, Lord. Deep within, yeah. Refine this fire. My heart, yeah. my heart's one desire. I want to be, I choose to be. I want to be. Holy, yeah, yeah, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be, yes, I choose to be. Holy, yeah, yeah, Lord, set apart for you, my master. I'm ready to do your will. And the wise shall be purified. The wise are purified because they come to the fountain that purifies. The fountain of living water, the blood of Jesus that cleanses us. The wise understand the power of being baptized in the name of Jesus. The wise understand what that does in heaven when we take upon ourselves your name. Look at Brother Hamlet, Lord. He is wise. For once he was foolish, and once he was running around and doing everything, but then he came to a place of understanding, and he began to understand the God, and he began to understand who Jesus was, and now he feels as if he's gained the whole world. And he's lost nothing, because he still has all of his materialism that's in the world, but he has understanding now. You're not trying to make us poor. You're not trying to make us destitute. You're trying to make us have wisdom and understanding that we may be a blessing upon the earth. Help us, O oh God, to walk wisely, to do uprightly, and to walk justly before the Lord our God. To walk, if we have, we have been upon the, we were born here. Long before we were born, it existed. Long after we were gone, it shall be here, Lord. But you are from everlasting to everlasting, and you're the Most High, the King of kings and Lord of lords. What are we before you? We are, we are nothing before you, but we ask you, we petition you, God, that we call upon you as those who will be purified, to purify us as we sing. Not just a song, Lord, but purify us within and without. We want you to make us what we need to be. The young ones, all the young ones that just got baptized, all the young people that are coming up, God, help them to understand that they can't lose out if they have you. And they don't lose nothing if they have God. And the world has nothing. They have nothing. The world has nothing. But yet they act as if they have everything. They have nothing. Because if, until you have Jesus, you don't have anything whatsoever. But we love you today. We thank you for the privilege of being here, being in your house, worshiping your name. Give us sweet rest when we go to our beds tonight, Lord. Keep us in the day. And keep your joy in our hearts and for all things we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.